How are you all again? <laughs> Excuse me, I've just been laughing at this absurdity of this bizarre movie we live in. It's just getting stranger. It's also pissing rain here today, so it's, a, it's a, back to our typical Irish summer. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. But uh, <laughs> I hope you're all keeping well and looking after yourselves, and especially the ones in America. I hope your families are safe. And Look, you know, it's a terrible dark time, but like... We'll get over this, don't worry. Now, where to even begin today? You know, uh, wow. So, we'll start off with uh, the the destruction of the old paradigm and the building of this new paradigm, which heralds in the the second renaissance. Now, this, uh, this destruction of the paradigm, it's... Uh, it's literally melting before our eyes. Now, people are like saying, I'm frightened. What is this? Uh, I can't make sense of the world anymore. Things are strange every day. Uh, this is supposed to happen. It's it's falling apart. You know, you know, this is in the Middle Ages. At the end of the Middle Ages, people were following a sacred chicken or a sacred duck, I think it was, in France. You know, we're, we're, in, that, we're in that stage now. And because of things like the internet and the speed of the electroma electromagnetic system, it's happening faster, coupled with all these cosmological changes. The sun is highly active. We're in the middle of full moon and this kind of thing. So <laughs> Emma Watson, that one Hermione, whatever her name was from those Harry Potter films, she shaved off her hair for Black Lives Matter. Now, this one is an ob horrible, obnoxious person. Even people who kind of would be sympathetic to left-wing things are sickened by her. I saw a few years ago a video of her helping homeless people in the New York and London subways, underground railways. You, was she giving them food? No. Was she giving them bits of her millions? No, 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 no. She was giving them books to read. So you're living in the New York or some subway or homeless in London. She hands you, of course, it's a Maya Angelou book because, well, you know, she's they're, they're her, her favorite book. So it's it's all political correctness. You know, it's all Maya Angelou, you know. So she shaved off her head. It's absolutely hilarious. And the, and the, 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 the whole ABC deep state thing, of course. Remember, we're in the middle of a civil war. Uh, well, we're actually in the middle of a coup, really. And uh, the, the deep state has lost its power. And it's trying to retain it back in a kind of a counter-revolutionary uh, moment of an anvil of the psyche. And any woman who suddenly shaves her hair like that, no matter what the, uh, the rationale, it's always psychosis. It's always psychosis. It's always, and they're, they're usually, there's usually, there's usually, there's sometimes there's entity possession as well. But it's, it's, it's always a psychiatric episode. When a woman suddenly shaves her head, it's a psychiatric episode. And it's, it's often, a, it's, a, it's, it's, in many cultures, it's considered a sign of possession. In fact, in some indigenous cultures, a, a woman will be punished by, ha by shaving her head to make it more easier for demons or whatever they call them in their culture to infect her. And uh, so that's always, a, you know, a woman who suddenly shines her head, shaves her head, is a psychiatric episode. It's it's mental illness. Now they'll often say things like, "Oh, I'm trying to be like Sinead O'Connor. Oh, I think I'd look great with no hair." Blah, 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 and all this kind of thing. Now think of Britney Spears. That that's a that's a classic example of what happened to that woman. It's mental illness, and they never recover from it. A, a woman, every single woman I've known personally who's had a hair shaving episode, there's been two things involved. A history of psychosis at some level, and uh, often heavy drug abuse, usually things like heavy skunk smoking and marijuana. They never come back. They never, a hard, I mean, when I say marijuana, I mean like the crap that they have today the, the, that's heavily, that, that's grown in GMO labs and is full of chemicals and everything. And uh, they never come back. They're never the same again. And uh, they, they'll, they'll, they're never normal again. It never, it never gets better. And uh, because when a woman shaves her head, her hair, just like in so many indigenous cultures, believe it's it's part of her psychic protection field. And uh, when the, sh the head is shaved, the entities go in, and that's well, that's according to indigenous cultures. And as a pagan, I'm not, you know, I, I'm okay with all that kind of stuff. Now, so uh, just think, you just think of every woman you've ever known who's shaved her head. 
and tried to make out, oh, I thought I wanted to look like Sinead or I wanted to look like Britney Spears. I wanted to look cool. Every single one I can guarantee you had went into, had a history at a time or oncoming psyche, psychiatric episodes and they were never the same again. So Emma Watson, that's a, that's what you're seeing there is a psychiatric episode of the deep state. The deep state is that's what she represents. Remember, as above, so below. Uh, she's having a, a psychiatric episode of the deep state, which is everything that's happening right now. But also, the other side are fighting back in their own version of nonlinear warfare. Yesterday, I saw the most remarkable video of Steve Banyan, who uh, what basically got Trump elected. And uh, quite a brilliant man. I've read his book, and uh, he's interested in magic and the occult. And well, wasn't that all over Trump's uh, campaign? And uh, you know, he refers to himself as an Irish American street fighter, and he is. That's what he is. And uh, you know, he gets slagged off terribly by the left media. But that's only because uh, he didn't, you know, he's not one of these cultured sort of like Ivy school, not even cultured, one of these Ivy school types, you know, Ivy League school types. He talks like a working class guy and because uh, he's a working class guy uh, and uh, he's there. He is out underneath the Statue of Liberty yesterday. Right. Reading the new declaration of the Federal Republic of China, basically a government and absentee these they're forming. Now, he doesn't work for Trump anymore. But he does. <laughs> what he's doing is he's doing for Trump what, uh, you know, the likes of uh, uh, Vladislav Sukhov Suke did for Putin. And he's probably being hired by the deep state right now. And uh, he's fighting fire with fire. And uh, it has a, he had a, a, a Chinese businessman who's back in it, and it's basically a, a new a Chinese federal government in absentia to replace. A, I mean, look, what, can you believe we're living in this? Can, can you? You should be enjoying this. You're you're living got a front row seat. Was amazing movie ever, and uh, he. Uh, this government in absentia is is to replace the Chinese with a completely evil. Chinese Communist Party, which is one of the most murderous entities that this world has ever known, and the darlings of the West and the deep state. See, they're all tiny. The, the deep state is ultimately, uh, as you know, as Rockefeller said, I don't know which one, in the 1970s, the, well, when Aaron Russo said that the Rockefellers told him, and I, I believe he's telling the truth, that they that the ideal system for them was communism because that would guarantee that their products would always be purchased by the state so they'd always have a market and uh so uh and this is why all these major corporations which we'll get to in a bit are all supporting antifa i don't know if you've seen that list from medium.com of all these corporations that are supporting the riots is it a <laughs> what you know but uh half of them have had their buildings burned down in the riots you wonder if it's an insurance scam or something but uh yeah that's actually could, could be you know, something to think about now that i think about it but uh it's on me and it's quite remarkable so these you know what what the globalist corporations want according to aaron russo when he was talking about rockefeller was that the rockefeller s said that the com if communism is the best system for corporations because it guarantees sales. See, the government becomes the main vendor, not the consumer. So the consumer has no say say in products. So, for instance, if a corporation wants to produce a product, instead of the people saying, I don't want that anymore, the government buys it on behalf of the people and gives it to them. So it's like, uh, it's a, no matter what shit they produce, they'll always have a consumer base in form of the government. And that's why they're all pro-communist and pro-Soviet. And uh, which that's, you know, people don't own this. People don't own, people think that communist and Soviet nations didn't have corporations or companies. They did. It's just that you don't, look at, look at China's the ultimate expression of that. They, they look at what happens in China with the one child policies. You know, I'm talking about the people like Prince Charles, Emma Watson, if she was intelligent, uh, all the celebrities, all the, the, the Bill Gates, they look at China with, the current China under the Chinese Communist Party with envy because they say, that's what we want for the whole world. 
to be able to tell people how they can reproduce, tell, to, uh, to take away their property rights, to mm, corporations absolutely running the, co- the system for the benefit of the, co- the Chinese corporate government. They have a kleptocracy who steals everything. Uh, they have their own, they have no accountability. The, they shoot anyone who gets in their way. They'll think nothing of killing millions who think differently. And uh, they, they look at that and they, the Bill Gates and the Prince Charles, and they go, that's the system we need worldwide. That's, the, that's what we need. And so out of the blue, so as the deep state is in serious trouble at the moment, uh, to make it worse for them, Banyan has directed the focus now on China. China! And... Uh, it's like the evidence is out there. the The coronavirus was almost certainly spread by the Chinese Communist Party, probably at the instigation of someone in the West, some powerful neocons or globalists in the West, and uh, the whole thing was planned. The collapse of the economy, the lot to bring in a new communist system to try and one last throw of the dice to try and put Hillary Clinton as the the empress of the earth. The you know this that that was that that was the this is our final throw of the we are in the middle of a vast civil war, but instead of it taking place on the that's all crude now on the battlefields, with you know armies and standing armies and and military divisions and so on, it's taking place in two places, in the psyche and in the spirit, and uh, in the spiritual stage it's at upper they're in their their version of Operation Barbarossa. They're they're plowing into Russia, as we speak. The deep state, in you know, metaphorically. I know some of you left wing people don't have much education in history, but like uh, that's what I mean as a metaphor. A metaphor. If you're a liberal, if you're a, if you're a, sorry, let me. Ex- I'm being. I'm, I'm making the assumption now that my audience are typical of li- liberals. So those of you who are. Mem- who have third level educations uh, from liberal li- and are liberal inclined or leftists this is this is an educational thing for you let me explain what a metaphor is a metaphor is when you use a comparative and sometimes absurdist idea to express what's happening with a present context. So when I said Operation Barbarossa, which my audience would all know was the Nazi invasion or the Third Reich invasion of the Soviet Union, you liberals don't have any education. So that's what that was. I'm using that as a metaphor um, to describe the spiritual state. And I'll explain what a metaphor is. I know with your PhD and your master's from your liberal colleges and your IB, you're not very intelligent. But uh, let, 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 I'm glad to explain this to you because it, education and, and learning is a good thing. It's, you know, you know it's, otherwise you'll end up shaving off your head for Antifa or Black Lives Matter. Now, now that I've explained what a metaphor is, uh, now let me explain to you what a, a spiritual concept is, because I know you're all dead inside, and I know you have no feeling, no interior world. A spiritual concept is when you encounter elements of your existence in its relationship to the cosmos and the world, and even your children, your and your your passions, that make you aware that there's something more to you than flesh, blood, and bones. That's what it feels like. I know to you liberals and you lefties, that sounds absurdist, like being able to picture things in your mind's eye, and you probably think it's a mental illness. But no, we normal human beings, we human beings, okay? We human beings that still exist who are not NPCs like you. We have these things called spiritual experiences. It doesn't matter if we're... Catholics, Protestants, Jews, Muslims, Hindus, pagans, Taoists, these things, these, these things happen to us. And it's not within your framework because you're dead inside. And because you're dead inside, you, you transfer this need for this desire for a spiritual world into the world of platitudes, into the world of sanctimony and virtue uh, to, 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 to compensate for the soul you don't have. So that's so that's let me explain to you to you people what a spiritual experience is. I know it sounds fantastic to you that we could actually have genuine feelings of oneness with the cosmos, but it really does happen. It does. 
and uh, that we we have internal worlds that that are expressed our feelings to that to the greater world through things like art and poetry and remember what I spoke about metaphors see you're learning things here third level education PhDs and liberal professors you're learning things from a scumbag from a, a ghetto on the north side of Dublin so that's what a metaphor is and that's what a spiritual experience is okay now th now that you know these things maybe you understand us a little better you see because we're a different species than you you NPCs and that's what you are you're a different species of humanity just uh, we're different from you just like Neanderthals and Homo erectus and Homo sapiens were different species of humans the NPC is being removed by evolution which I fully believe in you know in in, in evolution biological evolution and being replaced and uh, what well, replaced worse of it we're, we're going on and you're destroying yourself and it shows up in everything from emma watson shaving her head to you're going mad and uh so you know we're, it's not hateful i don't hate you i know you hate us for not, you know, this is why you you lash out and scream because you know inside that there's something not right there, and basically let me let me tell you what you are. This is good, okay? You are Homo. We are Homo sapiens, right? That's what we are, and we're maintaining the Homo sapien path, the development through enlightenment and culture and art and love and human social uh, developments. What you are is Homo Travis Pickle. That's what you are. You are Homo Travis Pickle. Now, I know you don't watch movies other than, well, Emma Watson in Harry Potter. But let me explain to you. Anyone who has an interest in art and culture, which you NPCs don't, beyond maybe, for, you know, Saturday Night Live jokes that are racist against Irish people. But they're not racist because, well, they're acceptable racism in your world. Now, let me explain to you about art and movies, okay? There was a movie called Taxi Driver in the early 70s, where, made by Martin Scorsese, and, and, it was play, and the main character was a taxi driver called Travis Pickle, played by Robert De Niro, when he was still normal. And in this movie, Travis Pickle becomes a metaphor. A metaphor is internal world... Because people had internal worlds back then, even dysfunctional people. Internal world becomes ex an expression of the degradation that's happening of New York City as it collapsed in the 1970s due to a mismanagement by left-wing governments and liberal governments and liberal policies and a, a federal government that was made of Republican scum. I don't remember. I don't like Republicans either. Who were obsessed with killing Vietnamese people. Now, Travis Pickle, a former Marine, gets a job as a as a taxi driver because he can't sleep at night. Okay. Now, as he becomes more aware of the degradation of New York City and the mess that it's in, there's one pivotal scene where he ha Martin Scorsese plays a nutcase in the back of his car who starts talking about killing his wife who's having an affair, and he realizes that even the middle class and the upper middle class are insane as well. And he tumbles into complete psychosis. Okay. So that's what these Antifa, SJW, Soy Boys, Snowflakes, and the politicians and the Emma Watsons are of this world. They are Homo Travis Pickle. That's what they are. Homo Travis Pickle. Okay. And I suggest, well, normal people, us Homo sapiens who are still Homo sapiens, go and watch Taxi Driver. And you'll find it has a fabulous. Uh, a fabulous metaphor for today. Uh, I haven't seen it in ages, but I should watch it again. And uh, yeah, so that's what they are. Their internal worlds are falling apart. These ones who are attacking black people's businesses in America to fight racism. These types who smash Starbucks while they're holding... A GMO soy latte. Those who are defeating corporations 
while they're driving a 4x4 Dodge uh, SUV fully loaded. Now, what that's called is, liberal professors and third level educated leftists, that's called something that homo Travis Pickle, you, is not aware of. It's called hypocrisy, okay? That's what that is. And the reason why it's hypocritical is I discovered, I spoke about in the video yesterday, is that your internal world is not capable of self-reference. So you could go to be burning down some working class black person's corner store in, in Los Angeles or in Las Vegas to fight racism. And in your homo Travis Pickle mind, you cannot reconcile that you're destroying a black family in order to fight racism. Because there's nothing in there. So, you see, I can't talk in robot language, but if I could, I would. This is the nearest I can get to it. You see, we homo sapiens, we are capable of internal self-reference. We don't act, and see, and because we can analyse, philosoph philosophise, contemplate, think, we do not get in, we do not turn into impulsive nut jobs now in taxi driver travis pickle he's up all night eating eat, uh, taking amphetamines and watching shit tv and uh, so his basically his body's destroyed and he works out so but he's destroying his mind and his body with chemicals he's unable to have a relationship with the opposite sex now you almost travis pickles you're on soy, so you don't, and you're all vegans, and you probably a lot of you smoke weed, and therefore you don't have, are not able to build your neurology with the, the fat that's needed to build your neurology. And that's just what leads to the rage as well. You're, you're basically like someone, this is what you're like, this is what Antifa is. Remember, do you remember the, uh, the, the scene? This is another metaphor. Another piece of culture. The movie One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. There was a scene where the guy is going, I want my cigarette. I want my cigarette. And then they all, they, a riot, they all go nuts. And the guy's going, Aah. Well, that's, that's, that's the deep state today expressed on the macro, macro level by SJWs and Antifa and all these types. Now, uh, so, again... I, you know, I'm trying to be. I'm trying. I'm. I'm trying to be a kind man here, to because I know you're not very well educated beyond maybe, you know, video games and things like that. And so anyway, uh, so we have the Steve Banyan thing was interesting for another reason. The you left these switch off now because this would be way beyond your understanding, but uh, it reminded me so much of that famous story of Alistair Crowley giving the speech uh, at the bottom of the Statue of Liberty, like Banyan did, declaring an Irish Republic and <laughs> a war against England in 1915, which, funny enough, seven years later, Ireland did get independence. And uh, and uh, 50, 20 years later, we got a republic. And here's Steve Banyan with a Chinese guy who's doing exact, more or less what Crowley did in front of the Statue of Liberty, Remember, I told you that, that Banyan had a cult training. Uh, it's even in his book, even in Mitzvah. And uh, uh, this guy boarding his, his Chinese citizenship, I guess. Uh, it's funny, isn't it? What did I say about cycles and rep repeating? Okay, you, you, you liberal professors can come back in now. Okay, so anyway, so what's happening is the paradigm breaks down. The, the zeitgeist breaks down, the world breaks down, we have this homo travis pickle as a reflection of the psychiatric state of the globalists at the moment. So, now when I say globalists, I don't, and even though they are commies, a lot of them would be a super snooty rich white people. In fact, nearly all of them would be, who are in private clubs and live in gated communities. 
But the war is very deep at the moment. And what's happening is, if you see these left-wing groups and these leftist socialist groups, what they do is they compile dossiers of enemies. This is how it always works, right? But the mind virus that controls them, they start compiling dossiers on internal enemies of each other. So it's like uh, Troy Troy and Styler are down in, in downtown Las Vegas, right, from Antifa. Oh, I'm Troy and I'm Styler. Oh, Styler. And, right, and, and Styler, Styler throws a brick at the shop window and it doesn't break. And then, 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 then Troy goes back, Troy goes back to the Antifa meeting and said, I'm concerned about Styler. He didn't throw that brick with enough conviction. He may be a racist. They do this to it. This is the, this is the, the same parasitic entity that makes someone left wing, extreme left wing, also leads to them having to create dossiers, uh, you know, smear campaigning, attacking people, because it's like a child sc screaming, you know, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you, in an adult's body. That's what that is. The homo Travis Pickle. And um, so that's happening at the macro as well. And I think the proof of that is George Bush Jr., George Bush Jr., the last pictures I saw of him, and the last time I saw him, I think it was on, what was her name show, that creature, Ellen DeGeneres, and he was all chipper, and he's the he's the noose. Could you imagine a mass-murdering psychopath is now the, the golden, the darling boy of the liberal left, okay? You see, no internal world, no ability to self-reflect. They don't remember the weapons of, the fake weapons of mass destruction. The liberal mind can't think like that. No, no, he's on our side now. He's been... We got him. He's great. He was, a, he was a wonderful president, even though he was. They were marching in Washington D.C. against him. Oh my God! He he's a wonderful president. This is what they're like now, because like I said, what did I say about them? The version of themselves that they were then is not the version of themselves that they are now. And this is happening in almost a moment to moment, because as this dissociation, this uh, this rapid cascading of dissociation flies inside their like the consciousness it's only a matter of time before this channel is shut down it really is so i hope some of you are saving my videos because i'm i'm probably the most dangerous motherfucker out there i'm not liberal i'm not conservative i'm not left i'm not right i'm not even an irish nationalist i'm none of those things that makes i can't be pigeonholed so i'm the most terrifying one of all and uh so <laughs> it's only a matter of time it's only a matter of time i'll be all right i'll be all right but anyway, yeah, and you'll be all right too. And uh, so anyway, so the this is all going on in their heads. So I see George Bush Jr. W. He comes out like last week, the other day, to talk about how he's going to heal Amer America's problems and solve to solve his problems. He looked awful. You know what he looked, and, and it's like, why is he doing this now? Has he got cancer or something? Usually it's the kind of like the redeeming thing before you die of cancer or something. And I thought about it, and then it dawned on me what he's doing. I think that the deep state have told George Bush, and our George Bush is now wondering if somebody like Trump or Banyan is going to start, because remember, Tr Banyan already called out uh, Kissinger for, for the animal he is. In a very amazing way. If he's going to talk about the relationship between the Bush family and the House of Saud. Which was basically, if you look at what 9-11. The ones who did 9-11 were the friends of the Bushes. And all these Saudi princes suddenly arrested or murdered right after Trump gets into power. All these friends of the, 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 the Bush family. There's a book called House of Saud, House of Bush, or House of Bush, House of Saud. Well worth reading. These people are bizarre. They walk around holding hands with these fellas who have behead women and things like that. But, you know, he was on Ellen, so he's wonderful. Hypocrisy again, liberal professors. Now, uh, so anyway, he looked like someone, he looked like someone who had lost his soul. If he ever had one, but someone who was on death row, and what and what he reminded me of with this, this this moment of fake redemption, but he looked genuinely disturbed. He remind it's like when Ted Bundy was on death row and all his things had been had been 
taken from him and he had no other choice, he turned around and said, it was pornography that caused me to kill those women. I still I know where their bodies are and I've accepted Jesus. The last minute deal to try and save himself. Because uh, he knew these born again Christians in America, these lunatics, would all go, Ted Bundy's repented, let him repent, you know, save his life. And uh, that's what George Bush and that, that, that bizarre speech the other day reminded me of. Is someone going to is someone going to reopen the files on nine eleven and find his con- direct connection? Remember, if you you look at the attack on nine eleven, it was the Saudis. It was the, everyone involved, nearly everyone involved, and it was the Saudis. And there's been all kinds of conspiracy theories blaming everybody else, but the only the attackers were nearly all Saudi. The the paper trail, and the money went back to Saudi Arabia. The intelligence that was that was intercepted and handed to Condoleezza Rice that attacks were coming using commercial airlines came through the Saudis and suddenly Trump gets elected he goes over there and then all, and as soon as he leaves all these Saudi princes are either arrested or murdered I'm telling you something big is going down major and it goes beyond what we're seeing at the moment now you look at the Antifa thing going down in America I was looking at that yesterday so many of them don't look like your typical Antifa type. Let me show you how an Antifa type punches. But these guys are like, oh, they're fucking hard, right? They're fucking giving it like that, right? Now, they look like they had military training. They really did. They looked like they were, some of them were too much. T- there wasn't this Antifa soy like punch. There wasn't that. It was, it was that. And uh, the kinetic energy was there. And uh, that that concerned me because they looked too good. They looked too thing. And the way they come in in black, they're dressed like military. And uh, even, they're, even their backpacks full of bricks and stuff to throw at people. It's too organized for them. You don't get that level of fitness and cognition drinking mocha soy vegan fair trade lattes and pl- you know watching videos all day long and uh, so there's something else going on i think they're more likely mem- uh, cia or something like that or someone shipped in for that purpose working for the deep state stoking up the riots as a last minute attempt to destroy clinton's uh Sorry, last minute to Trump, Trump's presidency in 2020. They disrupt it as much as possible, make them embarrassed as much as possible. The Irish Times yesterday had an article that was laughable. And they've had nothing. You, The Irish Times is now Trump derangement syndrome completely. Uh, well, they're not claiming that men who are laughing at Greta Thunberg's <laughs> climate expertise are afraid of her. I'm so frightened of her. Oh, I'm so f- they're frightened of her. <laughs> you know... <laughs> <laughs> they, you know, they had these articles. An article yesterday about a guy claiming that Trump has lost his mind. He's gone into he's gone into psychosis. America's destroyed, and you look at the guy who wrote the article. Like all the other articles in the Irish Times, he's connected to the Clinton Foundation. He was a script a, a speechwriter for the Clintons. Of course, they don't mention that in the Irish Times uh, bio section. Oh, it's not mentioned at all, but, well, I didn't see it anyway. They couldn't even find a link to his thing. But basically, a Clinton insider writing, now writing uh, columns for the Irish Times that are supposed to be impartial. But what's beautiful about it is that the comments have all turned around in the, uh, in the Irish Times comment section on Facebook. Where a, in the, if, about a year ago, you would have had all these middle class people going... Trump, ha ha, or, or kind of like Irish morons going, get this fucking Egypt out, he's a fucking Egypt, this Trump, he's a fucking Egypt, these types, right? Now people are toasting, oh, this is just more Trump derangement syndrome. Oh, typical of the Irish Times. Oh, at least the, at least the United States has a leader that takes action and runs, that looks after their country. And the, the middle class ones that are still trying to fight for Clinton, they write things like, I'm not reading, one of them actually wrote yesterday, I... You know, uh, Cynthia from Dorky. I'm refusing to watch 
read these comments anymore because they are uh, they are clearly Russian bots. They're still on the Russian bots thing, right? Because again, they can't. The they can't, Homo Travis Pickle can enlighten itself, and <laughs> it's just amazing. So that's switching around even here in Ireland. Uh, just and in Italy, you have the now orange vest the vest movement, where you've had major riots in Milan, not riots, marches in Milan and Bari, and all over the country, of people saying that the pandemic was completely unnecessary. You terrorized the Italian people and you destroyed their economies. Complete and total blackout by like the English speaking media, of course. Meanwhile, we get our prime minister in the park. With his, with, you know, trying looking like a supermodel for his uh, his constituents, and uh, you know, in Ireland where we've been trained, we've been trained by spin doctors to call their politicians by their first name. I have to tell Irish people stop calling politicians by their first names. They're not your friends. They're your uh, technically they should be your employees. They're not your friends. Okay. They're not your mates, you know. This is what this this is deliberately designed. So, ah, sure, that's old Joey, Bertie, Leah, Lee, Malone. That's that that's designed for that reason. They think that you're friends with them, and uh, so I uh, so uh, where was I? I'm all over the place here. But <laughs> the world's all over the place here now. Uh, see, liberal professor NPCs. This is because I still have cognitive full integration. I can process different thoughts at different times. I can speak and think and the next thing I'm going to say. I don't need to write down on a piece of paper and things like that. And uh, so, yeah, so it's changing. I even saw that the the judge uh, made John Waters and Gemma Hordardi pay. Now, I'm not involved in that case. So, you know, that's their business. They're doing their own thing. So don't, don't try and say that no, I'm part of that. I'm not. I mean, I, I, you know, this is the people. They're they're using their democratic right to take something to the courts. It's not something I would do. But if, you know, different horses, different courses. People are entitled to do what they want to do. They got hit with a fifty thousand euro, uh, what you call it, bill, by the judge. And I was looking at the comments in the, uh, today on Facebook, and people were kind of is quite supportive of them. So that's even turned around, you know. They were they took a lot of case. We don't know Ireland to the lockdown was unconstitutional, which it is, and um, the Irish media went and the establishment attacked them as usual, and uh, all the. I heard uh, John Waters talking about Christy Moore, and and he was Christy Moore's an Irish folk singer, who used to support the IRA, by the way. Uh, even when they were doing their terrible civilian bombings of Britain, lefties, they don't care. And uh, basically, this guy Christy Moore interprets other people's songs while trying to be traced, put himself as a man of the people, while he's a multi millionaire, you know. I'm an ordinary man, nothing special, nothing grand. And he sings about the rich, while he's like one of the, the half point naught percent himself. But. Uh, Nice voice and everything, but he's supposed to be this great troubadour of the people. If you listen to the songs that he's written, they're ridiculous. He wrote a song about Knock Airport. For you know, you know a song about a, a fella's trying to drink Guinness on a surfboard. He's the Benny Hill of folk music, and yet he's held up as some great troubadour. Yeah, he can interpret other people's songs quite well, but his own songs are absolute rubbish. Rubbish. They're the gimmicky, cash in things on. They're like. You know, uh, do you remember that thing they had in America, the Capitol Steps? The, the, you know, that I call these people singing about American. It's like, the, they celebrate the political system by by pretending to be parodying it, but they're really celebrating it. Like, uh, the budget deficit, the budget deficit, the budget deficit now. And there's another cunt in America who plays a piano and goes, oh, Clinton is in town again. Where's Hillary? And people are going, oh. Well, he's the Irish version of that, but he does it with a folk guitar. Well, he was. He hasn't had it in years. Jocks or goes to Stuttgart. It's like, it's uh, enough. Okay. But uh, he has his good points too. But he's now part of the, firmly part of the establishment. Just like Bono and the rest of them. Okay. Because again, the world is changing. They're being phased out. And maybe, in, you know, and I'm, you know, it's, it's, uh, 
No, I don't like the person. I'm not, not knocking the man personally. I'm just saying he represents a an archaic, extinct dinosaur world that has no relevance today. And that's the funny thing is that it's not the youth. It's not the youth that are leading the world today. It's people of, of all ages. Not you know. It's, it's like the youth would norm. The youth are the conservative ones today. They 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 can't, you know they're the the majority of the Travis Pickles are these you know the youth. Of course, there's lots of fantastic young people who see right through it. Now, another friend of mine who's American who lives in Ireland had mentioned that when the Rodney King riots happened back in the early nineties, I was living in the U.S. at the time, and a bunch of LAPD police officers beat up a guy called Rodney King with uh, uh, truncheons, nightsticks, uh, viciously, and it was caught on camera that someone had a, had a, had a, had a, had a, cam, a handy cam handy and filmed it. And it led to awful riots in LA. It was a horrible scene where a truck driver was pulled out in the section and beaten half to death. And LA went up in flames, South Central and all this stuff. And it was very similar to what's going now, but it was really black people rioting, not like white people going into, rich white people going into black neighborhoods and destroying them by, by pretending that they're defending them. And uh, she made an excellent point. What policeman would go out of his way to video him doing something like that awful attack on that man who died in Minneapolis recently? It was almost like he wanted to be seen. And then the establishment put that video everywhere so everyone sees it. In this day and age when everyone and his brother has a, and his mother has a camera, cops can't, don't do that normally. And they can't, those days of beating people up on the sly, like the Rodney King thing, is gone. Because the camera's everywhere. It just, it, it's, it just makes, I mean, yeah, it just makes no sense, any of it. You know, it's like, it, it just, you know, there's the, the possibility that that copper was just a psychopath who, who was just doing a, a vicious murder. That's, we have to accept that, too. Two, was this some kind of weird performance? You know, it's like, it just, uh, you know, it just, nothing makes sense anymore in this, in this world. And what we're doing is this civil war, this coup, is heavily involved in this nonlinear warfare thing. I remember there was loads of things came out of the Ukraine that people would, I mean, idiot friends of mine online would say, or idiot truthers would say things like, they show a video from the Ukraine, look at these bastards killing the people. They wouldn't know what side it was. They just were purely driven by the reaction that they had to say something to pretend they were on the side of somebody against injustice. Uh, so, you know, it's planet gaslighting. It really is. I, like when I wrote the book, The Anvil of the Psyche, I look, I'm not, it's out of print. I'm not doing another one. It's, I'm not doing a second version of it. It's totally irrelevant now because all the things that are in the book wouldn't work today. That's how quickly the world is changing. But uh, these videos are, um, are what that is now, okay? The... the I mean, if I was a cash-in merchant, I'd release and probably sell thousands of copies and make loads of money. I'm not like that. I don't cash in. Okay, so uh, and it's also it wouldn't. It's just not right. It's not. It's it's had its day. You you to have it have collectors' items that's probably worth a lot of money now. Good luck to you. There, that's my gift to you. The rest of you, borrow it from someone. Don't pay some gobshite on Amazon hundreds of hundreds of euros of dollars for it. Now. <sighs> Listen to my interview with Greg Moffat on legalized freedom on the anvil of the psyche. You'll get a beautiful flavor of it there. Now, uh, so the absurdist cinema, the theater of the absurd continues. Now, there's an end game to this. Well, the end game to this is, uh, well, what I'm talking about here, the second revolution, the second uh, renaissance, the restoration of a, a, a world that will remove... The globalists, in the same way, the, the power of the globalists, they'll always be there to some extent, but the overreaching power of them, in the same way the popes and the feudal system was smashed by the Renaissance in many ways. Uh, so, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a glorious thing. Like I said, great art will come out of this. Not from the, the homo travis pickles, 
they're, they're all they can do is do things like shave their heads. But uh, the rest of us, there's young people right now who are writing songs, starting bands, doing poetry, and people of all ages as well who are going to write books and stuff and be inspired to create this. This is why I say to all you artists out there, Terrence McKenna was right. If the artist can't find a way, no one can. This is why the globalists have co-opted art to stop organic groundswells of art movements coming up. This is why the establishment media, the things like Rolling Stone magazine, they don't feature many new acts, and if they do, they're state-approved. They'll, you know, I mean, I have to laugh at like Rolling Stone. They're still doing profiles on Jackson Brown for fuck's sake. <laughs> it's ridiculous. You know, there was a group in America back in the eighties called the Association for the Advancement of Time. They were saying that there's something happened in this country where we're still stuck in the 70s culturally. God, they were absolutely right. There was absolutely, if you go to like the best guitarists of all time or anything on, on or the best this or the best band, the best album it, on Rolling Stone, it's all 70s stuff. And by people, who, by people who weren't even around in the 70s, it's really, really strange. But they have, they're given a script and told to read it. And uh, so. You know, it, it, it's very easy to get upset, and I don't blame people because it's confusing. And that's the nature of gaslighting. That's the nature of gaslighting, to, to, to make it go, I've had enough. But I, I also know that this is a, this is this, there's two sides to this. Uh, if and when, and almost pros certainly, these my channel here will be shut down, I'll be thrown off Google or YouTube. Even though I haven't done anything, I haven't violated the terms of their service or anything like that. They, they'll, they, you can just tell, you can just feel it. You can, it's, it's just the, you know, it's the, the sharks are circling. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, people will download these videos and put them up somewhere else and so on. Uh, it, it's just, it's, you know, it. If someone wants to censor you, or shut you down, it's because they're being dishonest with themselves. That's what it comes down to. You know, that's what it comes down to. If someone is trying to silence you, where it's a, a pasty face, homo Travis Pickle, SJW Snowflake. Punching a Nazi. It's because they don't, they're being dishonest with themselves. They know that their, their own white privilege is what's the issue and not the white privilege of working class. See, they have no, like, I posted a picture of Ballymun Flats in the seven, in the early 80s that I grew up in, absolute slum. And these people think that all white people, these types, Antifa types, do you think that every single white person grew up in a white bed suburb uh, like they did, uh, with spoiled by their parents who bought them everything? They have no concept of white people like me and lots of us around the world who live in shit, who grew up in shithole ghettos that didn't have a pot to piss in. Uh, they have no concept of that. They're, because again, they've no internal world. They can't make that reference. They can't. They can't extrapolate that reference, and uh, they, they it just isn't in there. They're completely. You know, their mirror neurons are gone. The partitions in their brain are filled with the brains are full of dissociation. They can't do shadow work because they can't. They don't have the capacity as they're being phased out by evolution to do that shadow work. They have no interest in working on themselves because it's it's much more, they can feel braver working on a greater cause. You remember Rick Mail and Rick the Young Ones, the people's poet, hands up like who likes me? That's exactly what that happened. That He called those people out perfectly with the people's poet Rick. And also there was a character in Viz magazine called Student Grant. I always remember there was one Student Grant where he went to an Irish pub. And Student Grant is going to all his little posh friends, Sebastian and uh, uh, Thomason and stuff like that, and saying things like, and Tarquin, and saying things like, uh, oh, I come from an old Irish family, an old fa an old Irish family, and, uh, you know, uh, let's have a, let's celebrate my heritage with, with a pint of Guinness. And they go in, and the guy, one of the, uh, Tarquin says, they're taking a long time, aren't they? And he goes, uh, man, this is a, pulling beer in Ireland is an art. It has to be done slowly and to cherish the, 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 the excellence of the beer and all this kind of thing. And then after a second he goes, hurry up you fucking patty bastard. That's what they're like. That's what they're like. That, un, you know, that it's all an act. It's all an act. And like I said, 
there's acceptable racism. I when I when I was in the United States, there was a woman I knew that when I met her, an immigration liar who was ant who was a member of the Democratic Party, who fought racism totally back then, an SJW type, nice lady and everything, she wasn't a bad person or anything. Who every time she met me, she couldn't help herself making an Irish drunk joke. She couldn't help it. She and even though I didn't even drink. She and she knew that she couldn't help make that, and here she was, Mrs. Anti Ra Miss Anti Racism, and here she every single fucking time, I used to laugh at it, but it was like because the the absurdity of it, and so there was, like there was that that's they had that sketch on Saturday Night Live recently that a show, a a, a program that just ta constantly attacks Trump, it's not hasn't been funny for decades, uh. Because he's racist, and they have this Irish dating thing. It's stupid. It's not even funny. It wouldn't be so bad if it was funny. And they're trying to make out that like that Irish people are incestuous, and they married their cousins and things like that. And this is the best they can do, you know. It's like, and if that's it's like groundskeeper. It's like a poo. The one of the funniest characters on The Simpsons. He's racist, but groundskeeper Willie isn't. You know, Otto isn't. The, uh, not Otto. The the little the little German kid. And the other character are not racist. You know, this is the thing. This is acceptable. These people don't. But you say, well, how can there be hypocrites again? There's no internal world. There's no internal world there. And that's why they're doomed. And that's why they are homo Travis Pickle. And um, that's it. So uh, look after yourselves again. Take care of yourselves. Love you all. Uh, the sun is coming out. That's a good sign. Stay safe under this full moon. All the whack jobs are out. And uh, observe, but don't be absorbed.